Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be painting a squirrel in watercolours. The reference photo comes from Pixabay and is by Ralph's Photos and is copyright free. My name is Carol Manning and I work under the name Pakara Arts. I tend to paint UK wildlife, sometimes in its habitat, sometimes on white backgrounds and botanicals. So I've drawn out my picture and taped it down. I've added a tail which wasn't in the reference photo, but I've drawn enough squirrels so I've got an idea of what they look like. I'm now mixing up the colours I'm going to use for the squirrel. I use Windsor and Newton Cockman colours and I'm using for the squirrel today yellow ochre, raw umber, burnt umber, burnt sienna, sepia, sepia mixed with some burnt umber and lamp black and Chinese white. I'll also add at the end some white gouache. So now I've got the colours mixed up, I'm going to start by putting in some colour into the eyes. I always start with the eyes on any animal I'm painting. I'm putting in some raw sienna at the moment and I'll add in some sepia and later on some black. But I always start with the eyes because it brings the little character to life and so that you feel they're with you for the painting. And also I find if I don't get the eyes and the nose right, the little face right, then I may as well forget the rest of the painting because if you haven't got the character of the creature, animal looking correct, then I normally start again if I get that part wrong. So I'm now putting in his little nose, adding the nostrils. I did take out one of the lines from the photo because I couldn't quite work it out because it almost looked like he had two nostril lines. I'm not sure perhaps whether one was a scar or whether that is actually how it is. I haven't noticed that on a squirrel picture before so I've taken it down to just one nostril on either side. I'm now adding a diluted wash of yellow ochre across the whole of the squirrel to get a background colour, except for where the white is on the white chest and the nose, and a bit around the eyes. So now I've done that, my next step is going to be to use the raw umber to paint little hair marks across the whole of the squirrel. When you're painting the hair marks, do try to make sure you're following the direction of the hair in the photograph, but also do a bit of crisscrossing so that it's not too uniform as hairlines just aren't, they crisscross. But make sure you are following the general direction of the hair on photos because that gives the shape to the animal. Apologies as I go along that I've made the odd word area, forgotten something, or done a bit too much erring. I mean, I'm still getting used to talking into a mic. It's an odd thing to be sat in a room on your own talking to yourself. I'm getting used to it, but I'm sure I'll get better as time goes on and I do more of these videos. It does give you an appreciation of all the YouTube videos you watch and how much time and effort people put into them. But I'm enjoying doing it and that's the most important thing. While you're watching me paint, some fun facts about squirrels. These are taken from um, the British website BritishRedSquirrel.org. So I'm just going to read out some facts. One thing I didn't know and I did wonder about is in winter red squirrels have a thick warm coat and a bushy tail with impressive ear tufts, some three centimetres long. In summer the coat and tail are thinner and sleeker and often the ear tufts disappear completely. This was one, thing, one of the things that confused me about the pictures I was seeing about red squirrels and haven't had them in my garden myself. I couldn't work out why sometimes they had the ear tufts and sometimes they didn't. I thought it was perhaps differences between different squirrels but obviously not. Here's my answer. Apparently they have a life expectancy to three to seven years um, you'll normally find them in the UK at least in the Scotland and places in the north of England 
most of the rest of the Engl in England they've been overrun by red grey squirrels and that's mostly what we see in the UK now um, except up in Scotland and the north they have five digits same as humans with small thumbs on all four limbs with long strong claws essential for climbing the front hands are very dexterous at manipulating small objects such as seeds and they appear to be right and left handed the same as humans they're generally on average body length around 22 centimeters long and weigh about 300 grams I used to have little red squirrels living in my garden when I lived in Scotland. Well, they didn't live in my garden, they lived in the trees on the edge of my garden. And there would be whole families of them. And because I put out nuts for the birds, the squirrels would come and eat them as well. So we'd often have several squirrels around the garden at the same time. And during the springtime, the little squirrel cubs would come along as well. I'm not sure whether they're called cubs or kits or quite what they're called let me have a quick look at the site kits they're called kits um so yes the little squirrel kits would come along once they got old enough to leave the nest and they were incredibly cute i put always kept the nut feeders well stocked up purely for the squirrels and in the winter time you'd often see them hopping around the garden trying to bury their nuts and other foods into the the grass and the, on the lawn but yeah, I do miss those. They were one of the wildlife I used to see a lot of. And yeah, I don't, don't do miss them now that I'm down in the UK. But down in the UK. So when you're painting the tail, um, the hairs are longer. So, and a bit curly. And again, crisscross them. So I'm doing sort of like quite crinkly looking hairs on this, I'll say they are quite a lot longer. I'm now putting in the branch with a wash of Horodam Schmincke super granulating paint, watercolour paint. This colour is desert green. I find the super granulating paint absolutely brilliant for doing branches and trees and rocks. I use it a lot for especially for branches and trees as you can see it's naturally separating to give a branch or bark effect and I will later which I think might be missed off the film put in some little lines to emphasize the bark and some white highlights just using white watercolor which dulls down a bit just to get again a bit of highlights to the bark so you might see that in the end photo as i think my camera cut out at that point i'm now doing a wash of raw umber across the whole of well not all of the squirrel where i need to put some shadows and darker areas I will lose some of my lines during this but I like to have the lines in first because it gives me a sense of the form of the squirrel and the direction of the fur and just helps me work and although it means I will lose some of the lines and I will put these in again it just helps give me that shape and depth. It is a bit the ugly stage as well once you do this, so don't worry about that. Again, I'm also adding a bit of sepia in areas where it's particularly dark, including putting some shadows into the on the bottom of the branch and underneath the squirrel's legs and side just to give a bit of shadow. So I'm now put, going back to drawing the lines again over the top. I'm doing a quite, um, I'm using raw umber but it's not very diluted, it's quite strong or thick, I'm not quite sure what the terminology is. 
but yeah I'll be painting across the whole thing so it takes a while and again make sure you're following the direction of the fur and but doing a bit of crisscrossing so it looks natural it does take time and I'm probably going faster and not quite as detailed as I normally would because I'm aware I'm doing it for a video and yeah, I don't want it to be too long um, if anybody is interested in seeing the whole process in real time this is obviously speeded up um, then I could at a later stage do videos where I do the animal in three or four parts over three or four videos if anybody's interested in that I have noticed when I've pa been painting on this that I hold the brush very close to the end so I apologize for the fact you're seeing my fingers so much um, for future videos I will try and hold the brush further back a bit from the end so that you can see more of where the brush is going and less of my fingers Also, normally, I, because I tend to work largely dry on dry, or with the, I know I do the odd washes, but I tend to, not dry on dry, wet on dry. Um, so, I tend to, um, do lots of layers. I know there's lots of people that do these sort of things in washes, wet on wet and producing brilliant work but it's just not my style. I like to be quite precise um, and although I do some washes to get shadows and things I do tend largely to work wet on dry so I let each layer dry in between and I don't do it especially for animals I don't do a lot of wet on wet so I say I wouldn't normally bother having my paper tape down because it doesn't get that wet so it doesn't tend to crinkle up that much with some of my bigger pieces when I'm doing the habitat backgrounds then I might well use a lot of washes and it does crinkle it up then so I will have that more taped down Depends what you're doing. At the very end of the video there is a copy of the reference photo from Pixabay. I use Pixabay a lot for animal reference photos because I don't get much chance to go out and get close-up photos of animals although I do do habitats and botanicals myself. Um, but not much chance to do close-ups of animals or birds so I tend to use reference photos for these I do make sure they're copyright free and Pixabay is a brilliant place to go for getting reference photos that are copyright free so at the end of the video if you like to pause you'll see a copy of that photo plus my line drawing there as I said in the original photo the tail is cut off but I've drawn enough squirrels that I've made the tail up when you do do the tail you'll find when you draw squirrels that the center line where the spine continues down into the tail is obviously darker than the outsides of the fur so that would be darker down normally down the middle You can also get the photo and the reference photo if you'd like to in JPEG form if you'd like to join my Facebook group. It's a new group, I've only just start, set it up um, but I'd love it if any of you would like to join. Um, it's a closed group so anything you, po anything you post from the tutorials you've done from my work or from the reference photos I've given you would be lovely to see. I say as it's a closed group only the members of the group would see your photos so you wouldn't need to feel 
embarrassed or self-conscious about it and I'm sure anybody would only make lovely comments and only critique if you requested them to do so. But as I said, they are, there are JPEGs on there and there will be of all the tutorials I do, any reference photos or I use and line drawings um, will be there in JPEG form under the files for that can be downloaded. It is quite a slow process putting in all the little lines and just part of it and you just need to work your way through across it. It's not easy to listen to some music while I do that. I'm now going over with the lines using Burnt Sienna to add the red fur effect. Obviously it's a red squirrel so you would expect to have some red fur on it. As I said it does take time so you just need to work your way through it.
I'm just now adding some sepia to get the dark effects in, in places around the ears, some of the eyes and just some of the darker areas. And just the odd spot of black here and there, or darker colour here and there. just rubbed out the pencil lines on the chest and I'm putting in a diluted sepia to get the grey lines that would be on the chest and the what generally the white areas to give some shadow. I noticed I seem to have missed the drawing the whiskers in the pa painting, I think I must have either cut it or my film cut out, camera cut out. But when you do the whiskers, add in, do it from the centre where the cheeks are out and crisscross them a bit. I've just added a burnt sienna wash just to give a bit more reddish tinge to the whole thing. And I'm beginning to put in some white oak white gouache um, lines to highlight some of the white. Oh, not necessarily the white, just the lighter areas. I have used a very fine brush, this is a pro art one, um, when I've been do doing all the hairlines um, I find you do need quite a fine brush for this, um, for the washes and the branch I've used thicker brushes but for the fur lines I've used a pretty fine brush. I list all the paints and brushes I've used in the details. At this point I decided I needed to some more highlights in areas so I've actually lifted some of the paint off just using a dry, well slightly damp dry brush. I will have to put some paint lines back over this but I just felt it needed a bit more highlighting in areas. So as you can see, I'm putting some of it back in again now, but um, it's part of the process is to work out where, make sure you get your highlights and shadows correct in order to get the form of the animal more natural.
Again, I'm adding a little bit onto the nose just to give it a bit more shape. Depth. And here's the finished painting. Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed this video please like and consider subscribing. Probably next week I might well be doing a fox I think. Um, here's the PDFs if you'd like to pause and take a screenshot otherwise please consider joining my Facebook group.